Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another video. Today, this is going to be the Monk Zero to Hero Guide. So this is going to take you from level one on the season start all the way up to 70. Going to give you the tips on how to level fast. We're going to tell you how to spend your materials. Uh, we'll give you the options about what to decide to do. We're going to show you what to do at 70 so that you can blast GR100 plus uh, very easily. Hopefully opening night, maybe opening weekend. We're going to talk about all the different options uh, and just you know have a really deep dive into what to do in the kind of opening few hours of play really. Before we do get into it though, as always, a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. Uh, let me know if you are planning on starting Monk and let me know how far you think you're going to get on opening night. Uh, GR100 would be absolutely brilliant. As a solo casual player, obviously that's going to be quite hard, but we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. Right, so season at the moment, at the time of recording, I don't know when season 25 is going to start. No doubt I'll make this video this morning and we'll get a date by the afternoon, but... If I had to guess, I'd be saying the 10th of December. It just seems to make a bit of sense. Season 24 has been on for ages, so fingers crossed it's then. It could be the 17th, and Doomsday Scenario is obviously going to be in January sometime. Now, the Monk, I think, is probably going to be the strongest and most popular class next season. Uh, we're going to get the Sumwuku set out of the Hadrigs. Uh, we're not necessarily going to use that, um, but obviously we'll, uh, we'll talk about that as we go through. So first thing that you would need to do is to wait until the season starts. You're then going to make a seasonal hero. So you're going to check that box uh, and make one. Now I'm going to make an off-season character uh, just so that I've got access to a challenge rift bag. Um, now, I normally start the game on normal because one of the first things you're going to have to do is get the cube. You also want to do a boss bounty. I just find those things are much easier to do on normal. Um, once you've logged in to the character like so, you're going to go back and beat the challenge rift, which is the weekly thing. Uh, look out for Rax, Mnemonic, uh, who else does the videos? There's a few people, content creators, who do them. Uh, they'll give you a full guide. Sometimes it can be an absolute pig. Uh, sometimes it can be very easy. It's just complete lucky dip. If you do have any problems, you can try and group up for it. Uh, that will generally make things easier. Uh, but once you have created your character, you've logged in, you've logged out, you've beaten the challenge rift, you're going to get a challenge rift goodie bag. Uh, and this is going to have all sorts of nice, cool stuff in it. So we're going to get some crafting materials as if we've just completed a set of bounties. We're going to get 475 blood shards. Uh, we're going to get some other crafting materials, so reusable parts, arcane dust and veiled crystals. Uh, and importantly, we also get the 35 dbs. Now, next season's theme is going to be soul shards. So they're going to be fairly powerful. And Monk, I think, is going to benefit from one of them because you will be able to use uh, the pet gem, the Dreg of Lies, which will give you a 50% increased damage to pets. You need to be a little careful because um, it makes you do 25% less damage. You do need to bear that in mind. But you get this in Act 2, so this particular game would be perfect. You'd go and kill Zoltan Cool. Uh, he would drop you one of those gems and you'd get the bounty chest uh, and that would have some gear for you to power up uh, before setting off though you do have a few things to do you need to steal the templar's weapon uh, and hire him as well incidentally because obviously you want uh, to level this guy up if you don't feel like being a douche you can buy some stuff uh, from the vendor and uh, bear in mind you would get a lot of gold out of that challenge rift bag so you do want to keep coming to the vendor whenever you reset the game just come to the vendor have a little shop uh, you don't really want to be crafting things at the artisans because the materials are much much better used uh, for other things so once you have got that done you're going to need to do a pet and also you're going to need to do some wings because uh, you obviously want to look cool i always forget the pet but obviously the gold pickup uh, is going to be important so make sure you equip a pet uh, wings now if you're super sweaty and you want to be really really efficient uh, you can uh, train up hadrig with the with the contents of the challenge rift bag and then go to two-handed axes and then just craft uh you know one of each so an eight a 16 uh, so on and so forth and you fill up your inventory with all of the axes all the way up to about kind of 40 because we are going to be making use of the two-handed uh, re-roll trick as always because it's just so incredibly 
important now with this season with the soul shards you do need to keep an eye out for sockets because obviously anything with a socket is going to be pretty good because you will be able to put a soul shard in there and you can use those from level one you also need to keep an eye out for anything with poison damage on it um, because if you do have poison damage and the socket you will be able to use the essence of anguish gem because that works off poison damage uh, if you don't want to accidentally salvage these you can take them to the mystic uh, and you can transmog them so again you will rank her up with your goodie bag contents uh, you can re uh, transmog these and then they won't get also salvaged i don't believe that works on console uh, but if you're on pc you can do that um, if you're not that bothered you can just simply set off and your first task uh, after doing the boss bounty is going to be to go to the ruins of sasheron uh, to go and get Kanai's cube uh, which is on level two so you take the map uh, it's normally kind of like over here uh, or sometimes over here uh, to level two and then the cube you come in this way and it's generally kind of up in the top uh, top left as you come in uh, so once you've got the cube you've got your goodie bag you will don't worry you're not gonna you're not gonna level too fast particularly if you're on normal um, you know you can crank up the difficulty if you want to get a bit more xp uh, that's totally up to you uh, but now we get to the fun stuff which is spending the materials now the monk has got a GG item now uh, in terms of rolling uh, at level one, which is going to be the crudest boots. So there you go, rip my season. Uh, that would be absolutely perfect. Mr. Carly summons two Mr. Carly's that fight by your side and they deal up to 200% increased damage and are in their active forms for longer. So that would be absolutely perfect. Now, also in the pool is also the lashing tail kick boots, uh, which is those ones. Now, your chances of getting the crudest boots out of your 475 shards, which is 19 rolls, is 62%. So the odds are in your favour, uh, but not by much. The chances of you getting either one of them, at least one of these legendary boots, is 87%. Uh, so not bad, but 13% of you are going to go away empty-handed. Now, don't fret, because... The loot pool for boots for Monk doesn't change until level 34. So even if you uh, kind of miss out, you can still any further blood shards, you want to pick them up. So you can then roll, provided you're under level 34, and these are still the only two pair of boots in the loot pool. So pretty useful. If you get over 34 and you do come across a blood shard goblin, still kill it. You can always make a second character and come back and redo this process uh, to try and get the boots, maybe to put them in the cube um, because they are just absolutely incredibly godly. So blood shard goblin, I'd always, whatever difficulty I'm playing on, whilst I'm massacre bonus leveling with the cursed chests, I would always try and see if I could kill the goblin, drop the difficulty if you have to. Uh, the shards are just very important for leveling. Now, let's say you're super lucky like me and you do you do get something on your first couple of goes. What to do with the rest of the shards? Well, you can roll for helms to get a Leorix. Um, normally speaking, that's quite highly recommended because you will put a ruby in there. It will give you extra XP because it will double the effect of the gem. Bear in mind the Leorix does not work with any soul shards, so you're probably not going to want to do that. Uh, you can do trousers, so go for some mystery pants with a view to getting a pox folds, uh, which can be quite good for masker level bonusing. Um, but bearing in mind that Mr. Carly crushes, you know, again, you don't really necessarily need to do that. What I personally would do if I did have shards left over is I would wait until level 17 and I would roll braces. And the reason for this is we're looking for the binding of the lesser gods, which pairs with the cyclone strike. When you hit the cyclone strike, your Mr. Allies will do a bunch more damage. Now, that again also stays in that kind of 17 to 34 loot pool range. So once you get past level 34, um, there is it, it opens up considerably in terms of items. So the boots are harder to get and the braces. But if you are between 17 and 34 and you do have spare shards, I really would go for it because it's going to make a huge difference. Chances are not great of getting it because there are the three starting braces in the loot pool. And then you're obviously adding a fourth with the binding of the lesser gods. So that's Gundo Gear, Pinto's Pride, Caesar's Memento, and uh, yeah, finally the binding of the lesser gods at level 17. So that is kind of probably what I would do. Now, in terms of upgrades, uh, this is a little bit of a, a, an odd one. Uh, Monk is pretty bad for upgrades. I think it's probably just easier for me to show you on D3 Planner, honestly. Um, 
So if we go to Monk, you've got two choices, I'd say, which is one-handed fist weapons. Uh, now, there are 14 in the pool, which is an awful lot. So your chances of, of getting this and getting something good is not amazing. Uh, not guaranteed like some of the classes like Necromancer or Demon Hunter. Now, I've been through. I think there are five of these that I would be reasonably happy to get. Uh, so that would be the Wan Kim Lao, which would buff up Tempest Rush. Um, you can do a Vengeful Wind, which this won't help you whilst leveling, but some Wuku works off Sweeping Wind, uh, and the extra 10 stacks is just huge damage. So if you do get it, not very useful for leveling, but it's going to be very useful when you do pick up some Wuku pieces. Uh, Fist of Az would be okay. Exploding Palms on Death Explosion would be increased. So that would be pretty good. Uh, Sledge Fist is rubbish. Shenlongs is rubbish. Scarbringer would buff up Lashing Tail Kick, so it would be another modifier for leveling. Uh, Rabid Strike, um, I guess this one would probably be okay, uh, but you're not going to have Epiphany until pretty late. Um, and, you know, you, you want something much better until you get up to like the late 60s. Logan's Claw does nothing. Lion's Claw is probably not very good. Uh, seven Sided Strike hitting another seven times, not very good for leveling. Kirishira is a buff wave of light. Uh, Jewel Breaker, again, doesn't really do very much. Uh, Flesh Rake doesn't really do very much. And Crystal Fist, I'd say that would probably be happy. Damage reduction uh, whilst leveling is okay, particularly with the Mystic Alloys. Now, I would personally go for the Shards first because I just think the most important thing is the Mystic Alloy. But you can do the upgrade first and then try and pair the Shards. So if you get a one Kim Lao, uh, you can come and do the level one and try and get the braces that match, uh, which are the Season Memento. Same for the Kirishiro's uh, Blade. If you get that, you can come back, you can do your braces and try and get your Pintos. Um, now, the other option uh, at 70 is actually to do two-handed Davos. Uh, and this is probably what I'm going to do, actually, because I'm all about getting in a setup as soon as possible. Now, there's only eight of these in the, in the loop pool, which is good. Uh, so the war staff is rubbish. Uh, you I mean we get an extra rune on Tempest Rush, but it's not really very useful. The paddle is naff. Uh, the flow of eternity, I guess, is okay. Seven sided strike gets more damage, but more importantly, its cooldown uh, is significantly reduced, which is handy. The staff of Cairo rubbish. Uh, Inner's reach. For leveling, obviously completely worthless, but what I would say is we're looking to get in a setup ASAP, so I'd probably be quite happy with this because it is just simply a first piece of inner, and I know I've only got to find another five. Incense Torch of the Grand Temple would be great because Wave of Light would be very good. Uh, you know, mixes, uh, you know, the resource cost reduction on here is pretty handy. You, you're starving for resource as you're leveling, so that is pretty nice. Uh, and then Flying Dragon. Chance to double the attack speed. This is great for uh, the Mystic Allies. Uh, it's great for when you get to 70 because you can mix it with Inner. And then Balance uh, buffs up Tempest Rush. Now you could, if you wanted, do the Debo first and then see what you get. And that might colour uh, whether you want to try and go for the Braces to match. You know, For example, something like a Balance, something like the Torch of the Grand Temple. As I say, I personally would put everything into the Mystic Allies, um, but that is kind of what I would be doing with the upgrades. Now, if you want to know how to do this, uh, obviously, as you rank up the the Artisan, you can then craft yourself um, level 70 items, which is pretty handy. So we can do a Fist Weapon, uh, and then we can just go and stick it in the queue, basically. Um, do the upgrade now when you're doing anything like this any of these crafting of level 70 things just always check the secondary property just in case you hit the jackpot uh, and you get like reduced level requirements which obviously would be godly so this obviously wouldn't be much use but again check the secondary there's nothing on there for level so that would just be a, a total rip uh, or obviously you do the two-handed debo uh, and that is is what we do now, the other thing before I kind of really get stuck into the leveling is I like to do my two-handed axe uh, or two-handed mace. Uh, so you craft a level 71. You're looking for crowd control on the secondary like this. 
Uh, this is almost perfect, actually. Um, so we can reroll the other secondary property. It's got a socket, which I think is very important for the soul shards. Uh, so I probably, you might want to keep this one and set it aside. Um, maybe for when you get to 70. But I think what I would probably do with this is it's got vitality on it, which is great for leveling. It's not perfect because it doesn't have life per hit on, um, but you take it over to the Mystic. Uh, you don't get a, um, loads of goes of this, but you're looking to basically hit level requirement, uh, anything kind of above 20. Now, you won't have infinite mats to keep doing this, uh, which is why I say you need to be a little judicious with what you're spending. Um, you also get quite high gold cost after a while, and sometimes you can get lucky on this, and sometimes you can crap out and, and get absolutely nothing. Um, but I like doing it early, so 28, perfect. I like doing it early because then I know if I've got to go put extra mats into it, uh, again, you can transmog it uh, to stop it from also salvaging. Uh, you get this little purple thing here. So that's it. So we know that at level 42, we can come back, we can use that, uh, and we can we can absolutely smash it. So stick it in your stash. You can keep these lower ones on your inventory if you want, uh, or you can just keep them all with you, and then, you know, this is your, this is your kind of go to swap them on swap them off um and pretty much we're ready to go now the other soul shard that i want to pick up is going to be the sliver of terror this is the one that goes in the helm and this is going to basically give us the extra it's going to increase our cooldown reduction but give us extra damage uh, and we're going to need to do some act four stuff so I would wait until level 20. Uh, the fastest one I think to do is Rakanoth. Uh, he's the weakest. He's fairly easy to get to. It's pretty much a set map. Uh, so I would be going to do him at level 20 to try and get a Sliver of Terror. Do bear in mind there are a couple of drops you can get in Act 4. So the other one you can get is the Remnant of Pain, which is a weapon soul shard. So I might you might have to do a few times, but you may as well make sure it's a boss bounty. So just restart the game a few times. Um just to get that get that going right now in terms of leveling i'm hoping to make a full leveling example video soon with a monk uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to be a little bit boring and we're just going to go to the temple of the firstborn and do curse chest leveling so you basically zone in you're going to look for the curse chest which has got a really high spawn rate um, it's not always in the perfect location uh, you do have to look around for it a little bit um, but you're just going to mask a bonus and uh, you know really fly through the progress obviously leveling is dynamic it depends uh what what legendaries you get if you do get the mystic ally stuff it is pretty good but some basic hack skills are going to be teleport at level nine uh, that's very nice because obviously it makes you faster and zip around you get the blinding speed rune at 22 which is obviously um oh, sorry 23 which is phenomenal because it gives you a whole bunch of dodge chance um and you're looking to do this curse leveling on the highest difficulty that you can. So that can sometimes be Torment 1, Torment 2. Uh, you know, you can try and do it a little bit higher depending on, or, you know, on your gear, depending on how good you are. Um, you know, don't feel bad if you're doing it a little bit lower than that. The, the multiplier on the XP is the most important thing. Uh, Mystic Ally incidentally opens up at level 22 with a Water Ally Rune at 27. And we also get Cyclone Strike at 14. But, you know, it may well be that you end up with a bunch of Wave of Light gear uh, and you might just basically be playing that. You'll just have to sort of see uh, how it goes. Now, I would probably just redo that. So you do the Cursed Chest area, remake the game, uh, and when you do remake it, just make sure that you're coming to a vendor. Uh, I like to do an Act 3, actually. Uh, that seems to be the, the best, just because there's a couple of vendors uh, pretty much right next to each other. So I'll zone in once I remake a game after a cursed chest run. I'll buy anything that is going to make my character better with gold. Uh, and then again, I'll check this guy and we'll buy anything that's going to make us better. And then we go off, we do our next cursed chest run, uh, rinse and repeat, and just do it like that. Now, when you are going through, you do need to be a little mindful as to whether you want to be taking the soul shard bonus uh, or whether you want to be putting rubies in. So rubies will normally give plus damage. It might simply be better to still rock a ruby whilst leveling. It might well be that you still want to do a Leorix with a ruby 
in your helm again to do the xp uh, bear in mind if you do get a soul shard and you don't fancy using it whilst leveling you can uh, salvage it it will give you either three imperial gems or a flawless royal gem uh, which is obviously the top one if you got super super lucky uh, you could get a red max gem which i think is a is it 280 damage it would be utterly huge for leveling as well so you know don't be afraid to salvage the soul shards at your level um because you might get something really nice i mean even the you know the all res gems or the dex gems from monk would be great and then you're looking to prioritize gear uh you know with sockets generally speaking once you pass 34 i would be looking to save all of my blood shards to spend at 70 um, but that is obviously kind of up to you sometimes you might decide you want to take a little risk on a gear piece um, but i think the stuff is much much better uh, once you do now you're just going to carry on doing the cursed chest leveling until you get to 70 uh, and yeah we'll uh, we'll take it from 70 now on a different character so this is my sunwuku character monk now obviously when you get to 70 you will then either carry on with your season journey to get your sunwuku pieces um running through the bonuses i'm not entirely convinced this is a set worth picking up uh out the gate the two pieces rubbish your damage is reduced by 50 percent while sweeping wind is active not great there's no damage you've got to keep sweeping wind active which is a bit of a pain the four piece you get these clones a thousand percent damage for every sweeping wind stack again i think it's pretty pants now when you do get the six piece you get 1500 percent for every stack of sweeping wind uh, you will by default have three stacks of sweeping wind and it's not until you find your vengeful wind fist weapon um until you get the extra 10 stacks uh, which obviously sends your damage to the moon and beyond now if let's say you don't find this and you don't have it uh, you don't get it in the one-handed upgrade if that's what you choose to do or you just simply don't find one because there are 14 of these bloody things in the loot pool uh, it is going to be very hard to do i would probably simply just get to 70 uh, and run a legacy of dreams setup so we do know that the second rift that we do after getting to 70 we know we're going to get the legacy of dreams gem you can power that up as you go and just by way of example if you do a level 25 gem and have everything in it as just a normal legendary you're getting about 12 50 percent damage uh, and obviously each ancient you add you get more damage and more damage reduction uh, and i would basically just be looking to pick up uh, probably the super easy items in the loot pool for level one and just build off whatever multipliers either i can get at level one or the game give me so we've talked about the braces any of them would be fine at pintos we could do lashing tail kick boots uh you know you're just building whatever it is that you get but you know the number one choice is always going to be crudest boots uh or maybe the uh binding of the lesser gods depending on what you can get uh, and you just basically build with whatever it is uh, that, that you do find you can also get the season memento braces uh, if you find yourself a balance or a one kim low you know you're looking to put two or three modifiers together um you know and just basically build something depth diggers is an okay modifier to start but really uh, you want something much better than that um and just build something and just keep adding to it uh now if you do at any point find the vengeful wind uh, you want to stop that strategy immediately and you do want to finish your season journey and get your six pieces of some wuku because obviously it is just going to be um just mega mega damage um whether you go wave of light whether you go tempest rush whether you're lashing tail kick i think really is totally up to you uh, the goal as i say is to get in as uh, up and running absolutely asap uh, how do we do that well what we're going to do as we go through once we've filled everything out with legendaries for our legacy of dreams build uh, that we're going to kind of go along we're then going to spend all of our blood shards on pants because we're looking to hit inner pants which is the most common inner piece it's got the lowest cost to obtain in terms of blood shards uh, and you basically once you've got six inner pieces you can then do the convert recipe uh, and basically fill out an inner set again check each piece once it comes out you might get really lucky with double crit uh cool down gloves or something uh, so just check them all each time they pop out and fill out your inner set that way uh, don't roll shards for your inner belt there's loads of belts in the root loot pool that's going to take ages don't roll inner hats in the pool 
Again, there's just loads. Don't spend your blood shards on those. And then I probably would be doing two-handed Devo upgrades with my blood shards, looking to hit the inner one. Um, or we take a balance uh, and we stuff it, not a balance, a flying dragon uh, and stick it in here uh, just to get the double attack speed, which is nice. Super easy cooldown items to pick up for inners are a Messerschmitt's Reaver. There's only four or five two-handed axes, so you can pick that up. Uh, inner doesn't need any weapons, which is just brilliant. It doesn't need any rings or bit. There are obviously best-in-slot items, uh, and I will link the inner guide uh, and builds that we've got for next season. Squirts would be a bit more damage, but again, you don't really need it. Uh, and yeah, we're looking to just simply do do that now if you want to get yourself an ingame which obviously can be godly for teleporting around uh, make a demon hunter and upgrade swords don't do a monk monk has got tons of swords in the pool demon hunter has not got many at all so you'll find it much easier i think there's about four or five swords in the demon hunter pool whereas there's like i think over 10 in the monk one so you know again another little tip there um but then in it six pieces of it uh, and in June, you'll absolutely fly and you'll just start completely crushing stuff. So that is what I would do. I would look to build inner over some Wuku uh, because you don't want to be spending a lot of time wasting resources on the vengeful wind that ultimately, as soon as you get six pieces of inner, uh, you're going to plop it in the bin. Now, inner, ideally, you will have to do bounties because you're going to want to get a rogue, you're going to want to get a crimsons, but a six piece inner spec. Uh, will be absolutely fine uh, to crush hundreds. It'll be absolutely fine for the opening night. You know, you can jump into some bounties Saturday morning uh, and, f you know, fill out your artisans, fill out your plans and all that kind of stuff. But that is kind of what I'm loosely planning to do. Um, yeah, and hopefully speaking, some of these tips uh, have helped you out. You can actually get on there and go and smash some content in the opening weekend. Right, that's it. That is the video. I've been the Filthy Casual. I'm going to do Demon Hunter next. I'm probably not going to do any other starter guides because I just think uh, that these two are going to be the most popular. Um, if you do have any requests, let me know. Uh, we do have some more videos planned before the start of the season. Fingers crossed it's the 10th. And uh, once we do get to live, once we do see what these legendary gems, the soul shards are going to be like in their final form, we're going to be collecting them, upgrading them, and doing as many build guides on as many classes as we possibly can in the first few weeks. Take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.